All right, we are recording. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the IPFS Core Invitations Weekly Sync. I'm gonna jump the edit note down in the chat. Uh, they did change, Grip had to change uh, their default permissions. Um, so the link in the uh, GitHub repo is read only for security purposes. So go ahead and add your updates. Uh, we're gonna select a note taker and Bashko. You are my note taker for today. All right. So starting with high priority initiatives, upcoming and ship releases. Go IPFS 0.6, it launched. Dean pulled the trigger on a Friday, yeah. So that is out. Uh, the release notes are linked in there. Uh, Adeen, anything worth note you want to mention? Uh, I mean, yeah, look at the release notes. There's a bunch of stuff. This is uh, a lot of the release has work that is like preparing us for feature things. Uh, that will be really nice, whether it's like quick support or base 36, things that we've been uh you know are not are not necessarily groundbreaking by themselves but uh are really useful for us going forward um quick in particular is gonna be really nice for uh both performance for both lookup speed performance but also for udp based hole punching when we get a chance to implement that it's so, like that's awesome and base 36 will allow us to do uh, elliptic curve keys by default, which will then allow us to do more sophisticated provider records, which will then cut down on the uh, number of provides you have to do to the DHT um, and allow you to have sort of more sophisticated finding of data. So some things to watch out for. Excellent. All right. Any other upcoming shipped items? Nope. All right. Uh, next is content routing. Uh, we can effectively close this uh, with 0.6 release. The team's going to be working on transitioning. So we're going to be going through um, our Q3 priorities this week, and then we'll create some new initiatives uh, based on that um, to go over in next week's meeting. Next up, subdomain gateway, Lytle. Um, yep. So uh, I I hope to finish <laughs> for this call, but I uh, did not. So uh, expect the, later this week uh, the PR in which we try to find a way to work within TLS. Um, I'll I'm rebasing it on top of uh, 0.6, and I'm decreasing the scope. I talked with uh, Steven uh, and we overall figured out that all the magic should not be present in the initial version. So I'm simplifying everything. Uh, we won't be automatically replacing the root. Uh, we will be simply trying, it, we'll be checking if the CID in the text, uh, if text representation of a CID fits in the DNS label. If it does not, we will try base 36. And if that does not work, we will simply return error. Uh, and that would be like small, uh, but significant improvement. And it, it will solve, like it will uh, solve the problem of IPNS with elliptic curve uh, keys. Uh, and we won't introduce any like magic that would surprise people. Um, we can always decide to do that in a separate PR. I feel for now that's uh, probably the safest way given the rework for, and people moving between teams. Uh, but we, we will be also like much easier to review. Um, I think that's it on my end. Awesome. All right, uh, next up, bit swap updates. We have no Dirk, so no updates today. Uh, so we move on stream content base chunking. I also think we are Rebolus. 
uh, read the foot, minimum amount of work done, no pushable update on Dagger for the past week. I think he is working on some IPLD things at the moment. Uh, next up, Rust. I guess security we, permission. There. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Allow me to unmute. There we go. Uh, yeah. So uh, Unix FS exporting is landed and done, and the milestone report for the grant funding is submitted and merged. So you're welcome to look at that. I link to those in the notes. Um, we have a blog post coming out soon that we're hoping to get on the IPFS blog as well as this week in Rust that goes through sort of our implementation of Unix FS in technical detail, which I think will be pretty interesting for folks. And, um, you know, if you look at the notes there, uh, still soliciting ideas for, you know, future work on, uh, on Rust IPFS. Um, independently, we're probably gonna move towards looking at the persistent story and sort of what sort of database solutions are available in the Rust ecosystem to use there. Um, so we'll be doing benchmarking and things like that on both regular regular old hard drives and um, things like uh, SD cards for Raspberry Pis and stuff like that. So taking a more holistic approach to you know where things are stored and how things are retrieved and, and stuff like that and performance uh, will be the focus there. And that's about it from us. Awesome. Any questions for Mark? All right. Uh, next up, Liberty Be Rendezvous. Uh, yeah, no update to this week as well. Uh, it's still blocked on the, my current work on the Sign Peer records, uh, which is uh, a dependency for this. Sweet. Uh, we should probably add a item in there for the Sign Peer records. Cool. Yeah, I will add it. Sweet. All right. Other initiatives done with all the mains. So, ah, stop jumping. All right, Unix FS15. No update. How about migration to multi hash keys? Alex? Uh, the, the PR to, uh, the Migrations are done, the repo is done. So now it's just integrating all of that with uh, JSON PFS itself and finding some reasonably large repos to migrate to make sure that it doesn't just like, oh, no, 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 you can't, like, there's all anything. Not that I'm afraid to do a test for this kind of stuff. Measure, measure twice, cut once, is this it? Measure once, cut eight times. That's how I like to do it. All right. Uh, pinning system revamp. Uh, no update on that. Uh, this will be the next migration after the next session. All right. Uh, shared IPFS node. Um, so my work on the pull request I consider done. So right now I'm requesting for the review to uh, see what I get back and try to address those. Uh, it's still waiting on some changes in the dependencies to be propagated. Uh, so how there would be welcome. Um, I'm also having some issues with testing on Electron. And I do not know if that's related to my changes at all or not, but I could use some help there too. As I said, I think it's done. Any questions for Gozala? Nope. All right. Uh, that is it for the extra updates, design review proposals, pinning service integration. It's mine. <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, long story short, uh, we the GUI team will be working uh, in Q3 on introducing a pinning service integration within uh, IPFS web UI. And that means it will be out of, working out of the box in IPFS desktop, also in the web UI uh, 
uh, interface when you load it in a web browser. Uh, however, there are some gaps or like, there, there's like a space of uh, unknown that we would like to clarify before uh, we uh, move uh, full speed ahead. So I created a document, uh, link is in, in the notes. I, click, I created a document which documents all the needs this integration introduces and how, well, it, it, it shows uh, the changes that will uh, be introduced and then what needs to happen on the backend uh, to come on those changes. Um, so uh, would be awesome if um, someone, namely at least uh, someone from GoIPFS, ideally from JSIPFS as well, uh, just to have more eyes on it. Uh, go through that document, uh, comment on proposed solutions. Uh, nearly in every uh, place where we have some need, I propose like two scenarios. One is uh, delegating more work to Go IPFS. Second one is doing more stuff in user land in J JavaScript. Um, so we, we would appreciate uh, some feedback on that how much stuff could happen in GoIPFS, how much stuff realistically could happen in Q3 in GoIPFS. Uh, so I believe we need to like a de design review or like a call to clarify the scope uh, so we can uh, plan this forward. So I've pre-added some folks to the list, but if you want to be on that call, uh, add yourself uh, and I'll try to schedule something this week. Okay, questions for Vlad? Yes, more of just a statement that I'm out for most of this week, but we'd love to talk about this. <laughs> Define like most of the week, like, is this like the last hour? <laughs> uh, no, Tuesday, Thursday. But Wednesday is taken up by like all day meeting planning stuff. Oh, okay. Can I like grab you later today? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, fine. I'll figure it out. Yeah. All right. Uh, Blockers asks. Waiting on um, some protons. Uh, my item. So go ahead. Uh, so I'm not. So there are some changes in the problems libraries that I'm not sure if it's accepted or still waiting on some things to be done. Some clearance there would be helpful so I can get it further. Um, another one is, uh, so there are a lot of uh, intermediate test failures in JS IPFS that makes life really hard because I don't know what are regressions versus what are known failures. Uh, I would like to invite you to try to figure out maybe different strategy of how keeping the tests while keeping the tree green. Uh, there are a few things that Mozilla has been doing that I'm happy to share, um, or we can consider anything else. Really. But at the moment, it's really hard for me to tell where things are expected to fail versus where they are not. So uh, on a pretty on a pretty on the same um, uh, on the test thing, if you rebase against master, there's a whole bunch of like stability stuff which is coming. Uh, I, I like think. today. Okay. Um, I think that's great, but I think generally it would be good to have some sort of system where we can know, like for example, what Mozilla was doing. If there was a known intermediate test, it would get marked. And then CI would pick it up and show you in lines that you can ignore this because that intermediately fails. Otherwise, it's kind of, it might be fixed now, but I imagine over time there will be more and more things happening like this. So I think something more fundamental where things like that could be flagged would be helpful. Uh, I, Alex, I didn't quite go that first piece uh, about the problems. I'm afraid your voice was kind of a little low on my end. but we could also take it 
definitely. In the chat, it is on his list. We'll get to it soon. Thanks. All right, any questions? Nothing listed. Moving on, uh, parking lot. Alex is out on Friday. Uh, are there, that is it for the updates. Uh, does anybody have anything else they wanna cover? Ask questions. I guess I just had like a thought. So every so often um, we'll run into issues with basically trying to use rsync without amount implementation and how things aren't going to work uh, because rsync relies on like touching the files in your file system. And so if you use the file store, then they get locked and so you can't update them. And if you don't have or trust your mount implementation, then you can't really use that to do the updates either. Um, I'm wondering if there's any like if there's any interest in seeing if we can sort of import and export data from the file store easily by like returning, like locking control and then returning control to the user, right? Because part of the reason if you add like a humongous amount of data, like if that's that it takes a long time is because it has to just copy it. Like it's literally just hard drive write speed. Um, and the file store gets around this because you just leave the data as it is and then you just write the sort of the intermediate leaf nodes. Um, we could allow that, like we could allow like import with like cutting, like move all the data instead of import with copy. I don't know if that's um, interesting. I think, I think Internet Archive had some use case for that while back. I'm not sure if that's still relevant for them, but. Yeah, it's just like, I guess I'm not sure like what the current like users of the file store are using things for. Like, I don't know what their, I don't know what their current plan is because things are, are mostly like, you know, read only. Uh, I think like Internet Archive actually used URL store. I'm not sure who, who's using file store. Okay. Something to, to investigate. All right, anything else? Once, twice, sold. All right, everybody, you can have five minutes back and we will see you all next week. Bye, everybody. Uh, I didn't check Slack. <laughs>